Hi everybody, let's understand one of the most interesting wage differentials in the world. Why males earn more than females do. In developed countries, the gap between male and female pay has been reducing significantly thanks to legislation, regulation, making pay more equalised in certain professions. But globally, the gap is widening. And even when the gap is actually reducing, it's not reducing that quickly necessarily. Let's understand some of the factual reasons behind why this wage differential exists and the economic arguments that may underpin this wage differential. The first argument is a clear one, that women tend to be in and out of the labour force, much more so than males are. And that comes back to childbearing. When women have children, they take maternity leave, often they take time longer than maternity leave to raise their children. And this is time where their skills are not developing, maybe they lose some of their key skills, they are not gaining any experience, their MRP therefore is not increasing very quickly or it's reducing, meaning that when they come back into work, they find it very hard to get work or they find it hard to get a higher wage. And in the future, their earning potential will then be limited, whereas males are much more attached to the workforce, to work itself. They don't tend to leave the labour force with that much regularity or at all, which means that their earnings can be much higher than females. And evidence proves this. If you look at stats, you'll see that uh, women who have children compared to women who do not have children, the women that don't have children earn much higher wages that, than women that do. That's an indication that this point here is a significant uh, reason behind the wage differential. Um, at the same time, we can also look at women that don't have skills. Women that are low skilled, they are the ones that are impacted more than this because then getting back into work they find very difficult. To ask for higher wages going forward they find very, very difficult. So this impacts women on low skills significantly. But having said all of that, even women who don't have children that stay in the labour force tend to have lower wages than males and that tells you that even though this might be a big effect, there are other effects that might have a role to play as well. Adding to this point, um, it's interesting to note that women who do take time out of the labour force to raise children, often the age at which they leave the labour force is the age at which most people really push on with their professions, push on with their jobs, they get promotions, they earn higher wages. So for women to exit the labour force at this key time, at this key age, will significantly limit their wage prospects going forward and could be a big driver behind the wage differential. So we're looking at you know, your late 20s, your early 30s, that kind of age, is the time where people really push on in their careers. You come out of the labour force at that time, you limit your wage potential. Uh, this argument doesn't necessarily hold nowadays in developed countries, but still can hold in developing countries. And that is the opportunity for women to be educated, to gain the same kinds of qualifications that males can. In developed countries like in the UK, for example, that argument doesn't hold anymore. There is equal opportunity for male and for female in school, in university, to access any kind of qualifications they want. But still, in many developing countries, that opportunity does not exist, and therefore women don't have the same skills, don't have the same qualifications, don't have the same MRP as males do, meaning males can bargain for much higher wages and salaries, whereas females can't, explaining the wage differential there. It's factually proven that women tend to end up in low-paid occupations. Factually proven. Occupations that are often part-time. Women like the part-time flexibility of some occupations. It allows them to spend more time with their children at home. Um, so part-time work often will pay less hourly than a full-time occupation will. Again, reducing the wage potential for females that end up in part-time work. A lot of women end up in service sector work where the demands of the job are not so high, the skills required to do such jobs are not so high, you think retail for example, and that can lower wage potential and earning potential. Women are factually proven again, a lot of women end up in public sector work. Um, the number of workers in public sector work clearly is in more favour of females than it is of males. Um, and public sector professions tend to pay less because governments want to control inflationary pressure and thus control the rate at which wages increase in these professions. So if lots of females work in these professions, which they do, public sector work, it limits their wage potential, their earning potential uh, as time progresses. A lot of women work in occupations where there is a vocational element to that profession. You think teaching, you think nursing, 
these professions are quite vocational. A lot of women work in these professions where wages will be kept low due to the vocational impact or aspect of that profession. And if we take part-time work and service sector work, these two big employers of women, um, it's very hard to organize trade unions around them. It's very difficult to get trade unions to back workers in these professions. So the trade union presence in these professions tends to be quite low. Therefore, the impact of trade unions to bargain for higher wages is limited. Again, keeping wages low for women in these professions. Maybe it's as simple as an increase in the supply of female workers. Again, we take in, developing, uh, in developed countries, um, it's become much, much easier for females to enter the labour force, much more socially acceptable, culturally acceptable. The opportunities for women to get into certain professions has equalised. Um, the qualifications needed and how to get them has equalised. So the supply of female workers has increased. In ceteris paribus, whenever there is an increase in supply and economics, that will often drive down the price, i.e. the wage in this case. So that could maybe be the reason why wages have been driven down and has maybe led to this wage differential occurring. Maybe it's not any of these economic factors or these labour market conditions that is at the heart of the story. Maybe it's still discrimination, despite all the legislation out there which is saying that this should not happen. Maybe there is still an element of this happening in the real world, in real world labour markets, where employers would favour having males over females and therefore will pay females less. Uh, even though it's illegal and there are lots of laws out there, lots of acts that have been implemented in the UK, for example, since the 1970s, that prevents any kind of sex discrimination, it may still be taking place. And if that is taking place to any kind of extent, it could be the reason behind the wage differential. So very, un very interesting to understand the reasons behind this significant wage differential, this very um, uh, important wage differential for us to get our heads around. And if you look at actual facts, you can back up some of the key points you want to make. But this is at the heart of why males tend to get paid more than females. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Stay tuned for the next video where we consider another very interesting wage differential. I'll see you then.